All right, welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're jumping right in. We're looking at a strategic risk assessment of what's being called the 2026 Great Eurasian Weather Divergence. And we're gonna zero in on this uh, really volatile nine day window from January 3rd to the 12th. Our mission here is to understand why this isn't just a cold snap, but what some are calling a fundamental structural fracture in the entire hemisphere circulation. Yeah, okay, let's get into it. What makes this so unprecedented is the, um, the atmospheric bifurcation. Mm. It's creating two fierce and often contradictory weather regimes mm. at the same time. Across the whole of your race. Exactly. You've got these high energy maritime storms just hammering the West, mm -hmm. while the East is locked in this uh, severe entrenched continental winter. It's a complete atmospheric split. And the reason it's a structural failure is because the whole thing starts about 30 kilometers straight up, which is really where the interesting mechanics are. The primary catalyst for all this is a major sudden stratospheric warming, an SSW, and that event caused a total wind reversal way, way up at the 10 HPA level. I mean, that's deep in the stratosphere controlling everything below it. Right, and that SSW, it basically creates this huge high pressure anomaly and anti-vortex that mm. just it violently collapses and splits the polar vortex into two separate cores so it's a top-down disruption a classic top-down disruption mm. and you have to remember the timeline here that collapse happened weeks ago mm -hmm. but this january 3rd to 12th window that's precisely when the signal traveling downwards hits the ground with maximum force. Right, because of that lag, that 20 to 40 day atmospheric delay. Exactly, it's not immediate. So if the SSW is the engine, what's pushing that signal down so hard? It's not just working in a vacuum, is it? No, not at all. It's really a rare alignment of these huge high altitude forces. Global teleconnections are stacking the deck. Okay. We have the quasi biennial oscillation, the QDO, in a strongly negative uh, easterly phase. And history shows that phase makes the polar vortex much, much easier to destabilize. And then you had La Nina on top of it. Mm -hmm. A weak La Nina, yeah. Yeah. Sitting around minus 0.5 to minus 0.9 degrees Celsius. Yeah. That just injects volatility into the system. You get a much more unstable jet stream. Which brings us to the ground, to this completely fractured atmosphere across Europe. So in the West, let's say the UK, France, we're seeing Arctic air just pouring south. Widespread northerly winds, heavy frost. The whole setup is hinting at a potential beast from the east style event. And that's peaking around January 8th to the 10th. Correct. But then then you contrast that with what's happening in the east. The Siberian deep freeze. It's just, I mean, the data is shocking. Eastern Europe, Western Russia, they're completely entrenched. Yakutsk, which is already the coldest city on Earth, recorded minus 56 Celsius. Minus 56, wow. And forecasts are pushing it toward minus 60. That's 20 degrees below what's normal for them. You just can't function in those conditions. And buried in all that data, there was one kind of intriguing ecological detail, a strange silver lining to it all. Yes, quite surprisingly, this deep freeze is expected to act as a kind of natural Siberian disinfection. A disinfection. Yeah, it's projected to terminate huge populations of agricultural pests, specifically the Siberian silk moth. So immediate disaster, but maybe a long-term agricultural benefit. Potentially. It's a strange side effect. So these simultaneous extremes, they're creating a massive logistical nightmare, a structural stress test. The southern flank seems especially vulnerable. Oh, absolutely. What? Look at the Caucasus. The Stepensmindalarsi Highway, which is just vital for Armenian cargo, mm -hmm. it could be paralyzed for five consecutive days. Heavy snow, icing, the economic hit from that alone is huge. And that's just one choke point. Exactly. Meanwhile, Turkey's got a mixed weather risk. Istanbul could see severe sea effect snow, which is a nightmare for the power grid. It forms these ice shells directly on the electrical lines. So when we see these two things, a deep freeze and a huge storm happening side by side on one continent, no. what does that tell us about the planetary system itself? It tells us the system is failing. It's a classic symptom of Arctic amplification. A warming climate is creating a vote. A lazy and unstable jet stream. It doesn't hold its shape, it wobbles. Hmm. And that's what allows for these violent, massive swings, letting a freeze in Siberia and a storm in France happen at the same time. So historical averages are becoming pretty useless then. They really are. This event demands a new way of thinking. The atmospheric separation we're seeing in early January 2026 is a definitive structural failure of that polar night jet. And that raises a really important final thought for you, our listener. If our historical averages are now poor predictors, if the old rule book is out the window, 
How must our urban centers and logistics networks fundamentally reevaluate their own survival strategies to manage this new operating norm of planetary scale atmospheric shifts?